Okay, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Derek, and I'm your instructor for our machine learning and data analytics class. Um, today, this is uh, usually my unit two materials. So, um, and, uh, and and yeah, I sometimes use these uh, videos for some other classes as well. So you could be in my um, deep learning class or something like that. So, so any any class where we need to do some kind of um, scientific modeling or computation or something. Um, you really need to learn the NumPy library, okay? So today in this video, uh, we're going to go through the basics of NumPy, um, just uh, kind of an overview of the, the most important things you need for the class, um, and talk a little bit about vectorized programming as well here. So um, I'm going to be using this uh, notebook um, number 2-1 for NumPy here. Currently it's numbered, it's called that, so... Um, so let's restart the kernel here. Um, all right. So, um, so NumPy is an important kind of uh, base library for doing any kind of scientific computation or, or scientific modeling or data analytics um, uh, using the Python language, okay? So uh, NumPy provides a base um, um, array data type for performing numerical computations in Python, okay? Um, and the, 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 the array type, the, the NumPy array type, um, is, uh, it's very efficient, okay? So it's implemented in C and Fortran. So when you use and do cal calculations with it uh, in a vectorized way, um, you know, the, the performance can be almost as good as, you know, writing the code in, like, native C or Fortran or something like that, uh, languages that are considered, you know, to be very fast and much closer to the, uh, the metal. So, um, in this class, we're always going to be using NumPy in this way, so we'll import NumPy as N NP with a, uh, small alias for the name, okay? So, I mean, NumPy is, the, the name of the library itself is short enough that um, it's kind of questionable whether you really need to, to shorten it a bit, you know, but um, but but you'll see this convention used a lot, and um, we'll use it in our notebook. So, so the namespace is just going to be NP dot something to access all of the functions and the objects and things in the NumPy library that we use, all right? So, one thing I discuss here as you go through this notebook, um, so you should be aware that really the, the, the array in NumPy, this is the, a, a closer object to basic arrays in like C and Java that many of my students are probably more familiar with, okay? So um, the, the, the list in, the, the, the general Python list um, in Python is a much higher level object because for one thing, you can put all kinds of different types inside of a list. It's just a generic container and you can stuff any kind of thing into it, right? So it could hold floats and strings all together and, and um, uh, booleans and, and, you know, different types, all right? So arrays in C and, and the NumPy array specifically um, are not like that. They're homogenous, okay? So by what we, what we mean by that is once you create an array, uh, like a, a NumPy array, um, it has a data type, and all the data that you put into the array has to be of that type. So you can create a NumPy array to hold integer values, or a NumPy array to hold floating point values or something, but it can't hold, you know, values of two different types in the array, all right? Um, so, and, and, I mean, some other similarities between NumPy arrays and, and basic arrays in C, I mean, they are static. So once you actually allocate memory for it, you can't really grow it and shrink it. So if, if you need to add things or remove things, you actually have to, you know, copy that into a new, a new array that you create that's either, either bigger so you can add some stuff in there or smaller so you can remove stuff from it. So, um, so arrays have dimensions. Um, so the, the, the dimensions are called axes, okay? So for example, the, the coordinates of a point in 3D space like this, one, two, one, it's, this really just has one um, axis. Uh, axis. Um, and th that axis has three elements in it. So, so why do we say that? Because um, something that's truly two-dimensional is really like a matrix, okay? So, uh, so here, something like this, 
this this is said to have two axes. Okay, so it has um, rows um, and columns. So in this case, the the, the and we refer to um, by convention we refer to the rows as the first axis, or when we number them, that's axis zero. So in this case, axis zero has uh, a size of two because it has two rows. And then the, the, the columns are the, um, the next axis when we have a two-dimensional um, array, okay? And, so, and this is called axis one, right? And in this case, we have three columns, so the, there's the, the axis one length is three here, right? Um, and in this class, if you're in my machine learning class and data analytics class, uh, I mean, the vast majority, most of the time, we're really just going to be using two-dimensional data like this. So we use tables of rows and columns, where the rows um, are going to hold samples of some experiment or samples of some population, and then the columns are going to be attributes. So each column might represent uh, a different measurement, um, you know, so, so the columns might be like your weight and your height, um, for, for where the rows are like subjects of your experiment, right, or something like that, okay? Um, so let's just look at some examples. I uh, should make this clearer. So um, here's a, a quick array, our first example of creating a NumPy array here. So here we, we call a function called a range, which, act, which actually creates a one-dimensional array, and then we resh reshape it into, into two dimensions, where the, the axis zero has um, a size of three, so we end up with three rows, and axis one has a size of five, so we have five columns, all right? So there's some basic properties. So all NumPy arrays um, like this, you can um, query the, the, the properties on the arrays, okay? So in this case, the array has two dimensions, like, like we talked about. Uh, you know, it has dimension zero, which are the rows, and dimension one, which are the columns. Uh, it has a shape, so the, the shape, we're going to have um, a, a size for each of the dimensions. So since we have two dimensions, we have to have two sizes. And so this represents the size for the first dimension, so we've got three rows, and then the, this one is the size for the second dimension. We have five columns in this case, okay? Um, and so notice the, the shape is returned as a, as a, a tuple or a tuple. The, the size um, is just the total number of elements, so the, 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 there's a relationship between the shape and the size, so if you multiply out all of the, the sizes for all the dimensions, you should end up with the, 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 the total size, which is the total number of elements. All right? So like I said, the um, NumPy array is homogeneous, so it has what's known as a data type attribute. So in this case, since we had integers that we created, the, the data type is, is a integer type, okay? And if you look at the, the data type that's used in NumPy, you often see things like this, like int64 or float64 or complex64 or complex128. So, so in that case, the, the, the first part represents the, the, the fundamental type, so it's an integer type. And then the numbers represent the number of bits, okay? So usually on 64-bit machines, you'll mostly be using a full 64-bit representation, whether you're using a 64-bit int or a 64-bit float. Um, sometimes you'll have something different, right? So, but, and in this case, the item size is going to be 8, because th this is in, in bytes instead of bits, okay? Since there's 8 bits for bytes, and we're using a 64-bit um, data type, we've got 8 bytes or 64 bits, okay? So those, will, those, will, those should um, correspond as well, the, the number of bits and the number of bytes, if you look at those kinds of things. Uh, we don't normally use this attribute, but this is actually a pointer to the actual memory that was allocated, okay? So the actual memory, amount of memory that was allocated, so since we have um, 8 bytes per item and we have 15 items, so somewhere out in memory, actually in memory at this particular address, uh, we've got 120 bytes, you know, 8 times 15. So, th so there's a block of bytes from starting at this address um, and, and to the address 120 higher than this that contains are 15 integers in this case, all right? Um, and in case you're trying to, the, the name of the, the, the class um, uh, that's the array type in Python is called an ND array. That stands for a, an n-dimensional array, all right? So, um, because, you know, these arrays can, can hold more than just two-dimensional arrays. So these can represent three-dimensional arrays, four-dimensional arrays, 
or one-dimensional arrays, which are vectors or column or row um, arrays. So. Um, okay, so... Uh, oh, just as another, so here's another quick example. Here's a three-dimensional array. So here's another example of a function for creating um, arrays. So, so here from the random library, uh, the random library at NumPy has different methods so that you can create random, generate random numbers with different, from sampling them from different random distributions. So here we're creating numbers with a uniform distribution from negative five to five. Now, this is common, so m most of the array generating functions, uh, a lot of them will take a parameter which is really the, sh which specifies the shape of the array that you want. So in this case, I want to create a three-dimensional array wh where we have five um, uh, of our uh, axis zero, and then we have four of axis one and three, um, a size on three of axis two, okay? So in this case, uh, for three-dimensional, the way I usually think of it is we have like five separate tables, five separate two-dimensional tables, and then these, uh, the, the axis one and the axis two parameters represent the rows and the column for each of my five tables of this three-dimensional structure. Okay, so each one of these tables has uh, four rows and five or and, and three columns. Right, um, and then you know if you look at the attributes here for B again, this should all correspond to the stuff I just talked about. So it's got three dimensions. Um, it has this particular shape. So size five for dimension zero, size four for dimension one, and size three for dimension two. So we have four rows by three columns, and we have five total of these two-dimensional tables in our, that are stacked together to make our three-dimensional shape. Right? So five times four times three um, should be 60, so there's actually 60 numbers in here. Um, and in this case, they're floating-point numbers, okay? So it's a float 64, so it was 64-bit floating-point representation. Okay? Um, so... So we've already seen a couple of functions for creating arrays. So let's let's look at a couple more. So um, for working with for working with examples and stuff, you might be you know just directly create an array from a regular Python list. So in this example, we just have a regular Python list, you know, because of the square brackets, and then we send it to the dot array function, which will turn it into a NumPy array from this list. Okay, and as long as all the as long as it can interpret all the items as some sort of a number, um, it will create an array of numbers. So in this case, since it's going to be able to say, oh, those look like integers, it'll create an array of um, integers uh, for us, right? So I didn't print out the, the data type, but um, so in this case, the, the, the data types are integers. Um, but um, oh, I did print out the data types, so it is, yeah, so uh, integers, right? So uh, no, no, so this, this is our first example of a one-dimensional array. This is, this is also known as a vector. So mathematically, we can think of this as a vector. So it's just got one dimension, an axis zero. In this case, there's three items um, in that axis zero. Right? Um, so another one, so you can actually create two-dimensional arrays using the array function and Python list. You just need a, 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 less, a nested list of lists. So in this case, we created a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns right, of floating points. If you pass in an array with different data types, um, it's going to end up having to default. It's going to have to try and figure out what the what the homogeneous type should be. Um, if I can't really figure out anything, the, the kind of the default is most things can be converted into a string representation. So in this case, it's going to say, well, um, I couldn't turn these into anything in particular, so I'll just represent everything as a string. And since the longest string was like six characters that I needed, which for this one needed six characters, um, uh, we do have to have, uh, the, the U6 means that these are um, basically six character Unicode strings here. So, um, so you can specify the particular type so here, even though I give things that it would normally con consider would be integers, if it, can con if it knows how to convert like an integer into a complex number, you can instead say, well, interpret those as complex numbers, and then you'll get, um, in, in this case, a two-by-two two dimensional array, a, a square matrix of complex numbers here. All right? So we don't normally use the array function for very much um, 
Um, so normally we're either going to be generating like uh, numbers that we need, it, need to use at random or we're going to be loading them in from like a file or a database is our more normal way to get the data into a NumPy array, all right? So um, um, a few uh, generating functions. So we already saw the A range. So what the A range does is it returns a one-dimensional array. It, it works kind of like the range function. Uh, in Python, so in, in, in the, the regular, the built-in function range, if you say give me a range, it'll return, um, it'll return actually an iterator, but uh, I, I always think of it as returning a list, uh, basically of the numbers starting at zero up to, but not including the last one, right? And you can specify like, like a begin and an end, so I can go from three to two in a step size as well, right? You can do the same thing with a range. So if I want a, a range of, value, of the even numbers, like from 0 to 50, I can specify a begin and an end. And if I want actually to include 50, I better go to 51. So it'll go, you know, it'll go up to 50, but then it won't include 52, since that's past the end that I specify here. Right? So, uh, but again, this is a, um, a, a one-dimensional. So I, I showed that above. So um, So if you look at the shape of that, uh, so in this case, it went up with 26 values in there, but it's just a one-dimensional um, array of, of where, the, where the dimension zero, axis zero, has 26 values, okay? Um, oh, yeah, so I already, I already talked about these. Um, so, um, and you can create an array that goes backward by using a negative step size and that type of thing, right? Uh, Lin space is a very useful function. So, so unlike so a range, it takes a begin and an end range. So Lin space does the same thing, except instead of having a step size, uh, you say you just say what is the final size of the array I want to end up with, and then it will you know it will split up your range um, in equal increments. Okay, so maybe just looking at it. Uh, so in this case, we ended up with an array of size ten. Um, so, um, I, I was probably, if I would have said 11, that, that's kind of more what I wanted. So if I get an array of size 11, um, I can split it up into exactly 11 e even pieces by having a step size of 0.1, okay? So that'll give you something equivalent to doing, um, like, um, like that, right? So here it knows, oh, the other thing about lin space is it doesn't, it, it does include the endpoint. So if you ask for a linear um, space, you're going to get the begin and the endpoint, and then um, the number of values that you ask for, um, you know, a, a step size, so you get exactly an array of that, of that size. So in this case, we had 11 values, but if I just need a linear space where I end up with an array of 10 values, I could ask for 10, right? So, so here I get the 10 values, and that's my 10 values linearly spaced over that um, um, that range there, okay? Um, I didn't have it in this notebook, but uh, I'll just quickly mention, so we might also use a log space function. Um, and here I might want some contextual help. Um, So what um, so what log space does is um, creates numbers spaced evenly on a log scale. So sometimes we got things that are in logarithmic scale. So the idea is like if I want numbers from let's say ten to the minus three up to ten to the three spaced logarithmically, um, I can use log space, and this will give me, um, and then you give, a, a, a again, a number. So if I want 10 numbers that are logarithmically spaced between that, I can do that there. So, um, I'll probably have to do something like that. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. The the, um, um, the 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 start. You actually give the power of the base. Um, so that's why I'm overflowing here. So so it's trying to take ten to the ten to the three. So, so really, what you need to do is you need to say start 
at 10 to the minus 3 by just specifying minus 3 and go up to 10 to the 3. So this goes from 0 0.001 up to 1,000, uh, but logarithmically spaced there. So there we go. So, so this is actually a, a logarithmic spacing there. Okay. Um, all right. So... Like I mentioned, um, so a common thing for these array generating functions, so, so it wasn't true for these these uh, space functions, but a lot of them uh, take like a, a shape parameter in order to specify the, the size. So here's one. I mean, you know, if, uh, often if we just, if we know the size of, of a resulting array that we want, but uh, we're going to fill in the values by doing some sort of calculation or something, we might create an array of zeros, um, or we, we might create an array an empty array. Right, um, so here we have a, a two-dimensional array with three rows and four columns, and here's another two-dimensional array with six rows and eight columns. Right? So, uh, empty, um, although, so I've noticed recently it's, something does seem to be initializing the stuff to zero, but you're not guaranteed to do that. So most likely you'll just get garbage values in here. So you shouldn't rely on that. If you need them to be initialized to zero, you should use zeros instead of um, empty. Um, there's also a ones function. So ones can be useful, for example. So let's say I want um, a three-dimensional array of shape three by three by three of ones. I can do that, right? So ones can be useful, though, because if I actually need an array of with everything initialized to 5.5, I can use vectorized multiplication. So element-wise element multiplication to get an array of ones and then multiply it by 5.5 .5, so I get the initialization that I need there. Right? So. And there's many others so you, you can look at, at that link there to, to see all of them. So. Um, okay, so this is probably the most important section here, I mean, um, of, of what I'm going to talk about here today. Um, so. And, and I might have a, a separate, whole separate little notebook quickly to, to talk a little bit more about vectorized computations and writing vectorized functions in NumPy. Um, so, uh, so NumPy arrays support a style of, of programming known as vectorized computations, and I kind of forgot, I hadn't really talked about that yet, but, but I just kind of mentioned that before I described what I mean by that, okay? So that means instead of using loops, um, we can kind of treat an array as if it's just a, a single variable and do operations on it, and, and the operations will be done under the whole array, okay? So again, examples probably make this clear. So let's say we have an array of uh, a two-dimensional array, so it's 10 by 10 square matrix here of just kind of some random integers, okay? So um, if you do like things like subtraction or addition uh, between arrays and what are known as scalar values, so here, something that's just a single value, it could be like a single constant value, like 10, um, or, you know, regular variables are also scalar in the sense that, so this isn't a NumPy array, this is just a regular Python variable that holds an integer 10. Uh, but again, oh, I don't want to say A, let's say um, val equals 10. So in this case, I'm still subtracting my NumPy array A from a scalar value. It's just my scalar value is in a, is in a, um, a variable here. But the result should be the same in both cases. So here, but anyway, the, the point is is that we're doing a, an element-wise subtraction, okay, like we did for the multiplication before. So we just take every element and subtract 10 from it, and that's the result from doing this, what's known as a vectorized operation, right? You do multiplication, multiply everything by 10, all right, so that the result of that should be everything multiplied by 10. Uh, division, right? Um, And uh, I, I try, you can do addition as well. I just, for some reason, I didn't do an addition. So, so of course, all four, all, all the thing. You can do um, exponentiation as well, you know. So I can do A raised to a power, and that'll, that'll square all the values in there, and so on. So most mathematical numerical operations you can do between a NumPy array and a scalar value to get a result, okay? Um, 
Okay, so there are many what are known as universal functions, um, So, and, and there's ways to write functions so that they are what are known as vectorized, okay, and, and these universal functions in Python are all, vec are all vectorized um, implementations of functions that we need to do things, okay. So, what we mean by that, again, so, you know, we have a sine function, but if you tried to call um, sine from math, on a NumPy array. Um, it doesn't know how to handle NumPy arrays. It can only do a scalar. So it can only, it can only, it can only take a single value and calculate the sign of it. Okay? So we want to be able to do vectorized computing. right? Um, so um, so th there are a bunch of... So it's not in its own math sub-library of NumPy. Um, but uh, but it, all, all of the the vectorized versions of the math functions like sines and cosines and logs are all universal functions of the NumPy library. So if, if I need the the vectorized if I need the element wise sine of, of all the values of an array, I can just call np dot sine on it. Uh, you can call absolute value. You can look, call log. Um, and on this previous example, I'm going to come to in a second here. But notice I can chain these operations together. So the result of calling absolute value is a new 10 by 10 array. So when that gets returned, though, I just take that and that, that becomes input to, to the log function. So then after calculating the absolute value, it takes the log. I had to ca calculate the absolute value first because you, the, the logarithm is not defined for negative values. So we first get the absolute value, um, and then we can safely take the logarithm of, of it and get our um, uh, natural logarithm here. So. Um, okay, we'll come back to this composing here in a second. But um, um, so all the operations we've mostly looked at so far are element-wise operations. So elements between an array and a scalar, or uh, or applying a function to each element of the array. But there are many operations that are defined that you can do between between two arrays, basically as well. So you know, again, all the arithmetic operations are defined between two arrays, as long as the two arrays are of the same shape, um, or as long as you can broadcast, so, so kind of reshape one array so that if you copy it um, an integer a whole number of times, uh, its size will be the same as another array. Um, I just realized I might not have talked about broadcasting uh, in this lecture notebook, so you might want to look that up after we're done with the notebook here. But, but anyway, so it, I mean, it's relatively easy to understand for arrays that are of the same size, so if I have two arrays, A and B, um, um, so in this case, these are just two one-dimensional arrays, right? So, um, um, so, so array is just uh, has one dimension with those four values in it. So, it, you know, if you add those two together, you get what you would expect. You know, so it, 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 again, this, this is doing element-wise computation, but it's doing it between the, the two array, the, the, yeah, the two arrays in this case. So each, L, each corresponding element of A and B get added together, and the result then is the result of doing that whole vectorized operation on all these element-wise additions, right? Can do subtraction. Um, so some people from some languages, well, from MATLAB in particular, um, are surprised because uh, in some languages, multiplication is defined to do matrix multiplication instead of element-wise multiplication. But um, in, in Python, the star does uh, element-wise multiplication. So what that means is that you know, if we have the two arrays, it's just, um, uh, in this case, both of the arrays are of the same shape. So it just multiplies 2 times 1 and, and 0 times 1, so you get the 0 and so on. Right? So that, that, that's really not what's known as matrix multiplication. That, that's just element-wise multiplication. That, this has a fancy name that I'm going to blank on. I can't remember, but... Um, um, uh, but 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 yeah, that's, that's just element wise. So there is the, uh, there. The, the, this is relatively recent. Some sometime in Python three, I think that they added this, or, or NumPy for Python three, they added this. Um, but you can use the at say uh, the the sorry the yeah the at um, or amp, the the at sign like in the mail for email. Um, if you really want matrix multiplication, right? So this is different than what we just did there. So, so this is doing uh, matrix A times matrix B multiplication, right? 
And in this case, I mean, the arrays wouldn't have to be the same size, so I could multiply two matrices as long as the, um, the, 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 the dimension, uh, the second dimension of A matched the first dimension of B. Um, you can also call the dot function, so, so we'll talk about functions, uh, member functions of NumPy arrays. So here though, you know, so, so this is just an overloading of a member function, um, the, the dot member function, because array multiplication is sometimes called the dot product. That's another name for um, array multiplication. So. Um, So back to combining vectorized operations. Okay, so you can create complex um, expressions um, where the, the values are a mix of scalars, but also of NumPy arrays, right? And again, as long as, like, if, if you're doing operations between arrays, so as long as the arrays are of compatible shape, um, and all of the vectorized computations between all of the elements of your expression are defined, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the calculation will be performed for you in a vectorized way, okay? So the, the most straightforward way to do that is like in a mathematical sense. So if I have a function and I want to evaluate it, of course I can easily evaluate this function for a single value of x, so a, a single scalar value of x. Um, so, but, but if x is like a, a NumPy array, this will still work as well because all of these operations, like, uh, you know, well, as long as we use our vectorized versions of NumPy cosine, we can calculate the cosines in a vectorized way, you know, division, raised to a power, multiplication, and, and so on. They're all, they all have vectorized um, implementations of this. So the result of this, you know, since our array uh, was a one-dimensional array with a thousand values in it, linearly spaced from negative four to four. The result of this is going to be we're going to be applying this function to each one of the elements, element-wise, uh, in the range from negative four to four over this grid or this mesh of values that we just created here. Right. So um, the the next video after this one, I'll talk about you know using matplotlib to plot. But here's an example. Um, so in this case, I could plot, you know, the result of my, my x values, which range from negative 4 to 4, and there's a thousand, you know, this was divided up into a thousand specific points between those two places. And then for every one of those locations in x, we applied this function, and we're, we're plotting the, the value and then connecting up all those values with lines. And the result is you can see what this particular function looks like in the range from negative 4 to 4 here. So, so we're visualizing the function. But this is a common thing to do with these kind of NumPy vectorized, uh, NumPy arrays and, and using vectorized operations like this, so applying a function like this. So. Um, okay, so besides universal functions, um, uh, arrays themselves have lots of just specific member functions you can call to do something specifically with that single array, right? So uh, we'll use these a lot, um, and there's a lot more than what I show, kind of demonstrate here, but uh, for example, if you call min, that'll find the minimum value in this array, which is probably gonna be one, since this is just an array of some random numbers from one to five here. Uh, and max, you can call max, um, or, or uh, you can call min. Um, uh, if you want to, to do it, um, like, like if I want to ask the question, what's the minimum value of each column, I can use these axis um, keyword, okay? And this might seem a little bit backwards from you, so since since they want the minimum of columns, you might have thought axis 1, but it's actually the opposite. Um, and there's kind of a good reason for that, but I won't go into it. But 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 you might just have to memorize that, so, so it might be reversed from what you might think. Um, but, but yeah, so if I want the, the minimum of each column, so the minimum of this column is a 1, and then 1 and 1, but the minimum of this column should be 3, right? So if you look at it, so and, and again, this one, since I have 6 columns here, I should, if you take the minimum over axis 0, I should end up with a result of 6 values, right? Which is the minimum for each of my columns here. And of course, you get the minimum by rows if you want to also. So that should be the minimum for each of my rows, right? So in this case, there were no ones, so the minimum was two, but the other two had ones in them, so. Um, 
but yeah, I thought it was important to, to show that because we'll probably be using, we do use that a lot in different places. Um, so, but there's other functions. You get the mean, the sum, um, and, and again, you know, if you want to, I can get the mean just for each column or each row using that axis property. Um, we can reshape arrays. Okay, so as long as the new shape has the same number of elements, so originally I was three rows by uh, six columns, but I could reshape it into six rows by three columns. That's still 18. I could reshape from two dimensions to three dimensions, so two by three by three also has... 18 values in it. So now I have two tables that are each 3 by 3. Right? Um, um, and lots of times you need to flatten an array. So if I just need to get, get it into one dimension of all 18 values in this case, I can call flatten, for example. So that, gives, that results in an array with just one dimension. So basically a vector um, in this case. Right? Um, So besides arithmetic, um, you know, uh, addition, subtraction, and things, uh, you can also do logical expressions on arrays in vectorized ways, okay? Um, and why you'd want to do that, um, I'll, sh I'll show kind of an example of we do make use of this fairly often, probably, um, in this class. Um, so if I have uh, still my same array here, you know, if, if I ask for A equals 1, that's a logical expression but it will apply it, and so the result will be a what's known as a Boolean array um, of the same shape and size as A, but where it's it's true where every place, basically it's true everywhere that there was a 1, and it's false everywhere that there wasn't a 1, right? Um, you can use all the logical operations, less than, greater than, less than, equal, right? So this is all the values that are 1 or 2, basically. So here, here, uh, here, here. Um, for some reason, again, I couldn't tell you, um, they probably because or and and, uh, well, uh, so, so you can't combine logical, um, operations that are being done, uh, vec in a vectorized way on NumPy arrays together using or, uh, you'll get, um, an exception thrown if you do that. Right, so you get a value error, right? Um, although in this case, you really any and all are useful, but that's not really what you want in this case. What you want in this case, there are uh, functions defined, universal functions that take two arrays, so you can do logical or or logical and or stuff, you know, like that. So if, so if I if I want a equals one or a equals five, I can use the np logical or of those two results to get that. Um, although, if you go off and look at other sources and materials and things, you'll, you might find out that uh, actually the, the, the bitwise operators do work. And the reason I suspect is because these Boolean arrays are kind of like a bit, you know, a, a Boolean value is, is really a bit, 0 or 1. So that's probably why these work um, um, in a vectorized way for these things. So. So anyway, you'll, you'll see a lot of people use shorthand, so the, the, the single ampersand, so the double ampersand in like C uh, means a logical and, and a single ampersand though means a bitwise and, right? Um, and the single bar means a bitwise or, but you can use those basically to do ands and ors of NumPy arrays, and, and tilde is not, um, and actually and there's an ex exclusive or, um, operator defined, so all of those, so, so I don't know if, if this is more readable than that, so, so all of these have a corresponding numpot universal function, so you can do it either way. Um, okay, so I already said that, that uh, maybe the, the section on vectorized operations is most important, but um, um, you know, I might have been too hasty because this is very important as well. Um, so we will be making use of indexing and slicing of NumPy arrays heavily. Um, this is one of the, the powerful things of using Python because of this um, abstraction and this ability to slice and dice um, arrays. It makes it very powerful to do lots of very high-level things in just a few statements as a programming language. Okay. So um, anyway, I mean... Everything that we talked about in a previous video for indexing into um, 
a regular list or a, like a regular sequence, like a, a tuple or something, uh, is true for a NumPy array of like a single dimension, right? So if I have a NumPy array of, that's just one dimensional with, um, uh, what, 10 elements uh, in it here, so this is just the cubes of the elements from 0 to 9, right? I can index into it using an integer index. I can get a slice. So the values from 2 up to, but not including 5. So that's going to be 2, 3, and 4 here. Um, I can use step sizes to, like, for example, um, get the values from 0 up to 7. Uh, it indexes 0, 2, 4, 6. So, um, I can use negative step sizes, right? I can use a negative 1 to get the last value in the array, or negative 2 to get the, the second to last value um, in the array, which is 512 here, right? So everything that you should have learned about slices already, you can do with the NumPy array, right? Um, and you can iterate over the elements. So the, the default for a one-dimensional, probably not too surprising, is to iterate over the elements. So, so if I do that for val in A, it's going to pull out 0 first, and I cube it. And this going to pull out one and a qubit and so on. Or, actually, I'm taking the cube root, so it should convert these all back to uh, their value before we cube them to within kind of floating point precision, basically. So, um, There's one big difference, and I did mention this, um, I believe, in my previous video. So when you slice a, a NumPy array, you get what's known as kind of a view into it. It's really just a copy, okay? So like if I, if I take a slice and assign it to a B, I've got this new array B, but it's, it's really, I haven't really copied the values. So both, both B and A are looking at the same bit of memory. So if you didn't know that, so this isn't true for regular Python lists. If you do a slice, you'll get a copy. But if you do a slice of a NumPy array, you'll, and, and the reason why this is, the case is for efficiency, okay? So one of the main goals of NumPy arrays is to be able to perform numerical calculations as efficiently as possible. And anytime you have to copy values, that, that makes things very inefficient. So it avoids copying when at all possible. So when you do slices, uh, you actually get views. So if I change the values in, in, a, in A, like make them all zero, so that's not what A looks like. But, but if you go back and look at B, you'll see that, that those values got zeroed out as well because they're looking at the same values, right? Um, so, although one thing that I didn't know until kind of recently, um, some operators are defined um, to uh, force a copy instead of doing it in place, right? Um, So here, I mean, up to this point, A and B are still kind of views, so they're, they're still, um, um, they're not copies, but, but they're still looking, they're, they're both looking at the same values in memory. So if I change B, um, 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 A is going to change as well, right? So, so now I've, I've changed that value in the middle of the zeros to be a 10. Uh, but the, the something equals, like plus equals or minus equals, um, actually force a copy to happen. So if I do this, I'm not I'm not making the change in place. Uh, I'm making a copy of all the values that B currently looks at and adding five to it, but it doesn't end up adding that five to the original of A, right? So so now B is going to have those values, but you'll see that A didn't change, all right? So so I don't know. I mean, you know, this is kind of um, I mean, it can surprise you if you didn't know that, if, um, but but you should definitely be aware that that slicing arrays. NumPy arrays get you copies, which is different from the normal behavior of slicing lists in Python. So. Um, okay. So the next thing you might ask, though, is, so everything we looked at so far for slicing and indexing was just on a single dimensional array, but Slicing and indexing works for two, three, and, and you know multi-dimensional arrays as well, right? So the general syntax is something like so. If I have an array here again, a two-dimensional array, 
uh, if I want to index into a two-dimensional array, I can give really, really what it is, is it's, it's a tuple of items, right? So but when I talked about this before, remember that this is, it's not really needed, right? So, but when I say two comma three, um, I'm, I'm specifying what, what Python interprets as a tuple, and it, it sends the tuple to the indexing operation, um, and then it uses that to um, index. So in this case, I want the value from row 2, column 3. So I want the uh, 10, 0, 1, 2, column 3, right? So again, column start and index 0, and row start and index 0. So, so that one, 15. Um, or the item from row 3, column 1, um, is that one. Um, but you can do slicing, right? So um, um, when I pass in a tuple, I can give, like, I can get, for example, all the rows, but just extract column one. So this is an idiom for just getting a particular column from an array. So, so that was the column one. Um, and like slicing, like we, like we talked about for regular Python lists, if you omit the begin and the end, it assumes that you mean all the values. So, so if you omit the, the beginning, it assumes you mean to start at zero. And if you omit the end, it assumes you mean you want to go all the way to the end of the number of values in that dimension. Right? So a shorter equivalent to the previous is that, if I just want the first column. Right? Um, likewise, you can extract rows. So if I want rows two and three, um, I can say, give me the slice two or three, and then a colon to get all row, all columns, right? Uh, in this case, if you want all of, of dimensions after a particular point, you can omit those, okay? So for a two-dimensional array, if I want all columns, uh, you know, some particular rows, but all columns, I can, I, can, I can just specify the particular rows that I want, right? So I just want rows two and three, basically, here. Right? So those are equivalent. Um, okay, most of these are more just examples of slicing, so I can clip off the first and last row and the first and last column to get the middle um, values, uh, and get every other row, um, like this, I didn't specify columns, so I get every column, but every other row, um, and so on, Let's, I'll let you work through um, these examples here yourself. Um, So, and, and I probably shouldn't spend a lot of time on this because we, we, again, if you're iterating over NumPy arrays, you're probably doing something wrong because you want to do everything using vectorized operations as much as possible, which means you're avoiding doing loops. But you can't iterate. If you iterate over a multi-dimensional array, by default, it'll iterate over the, the, the axis zero, the highest dimension. So you'll get, for a two-dimensional array, you'll get just the rows, right? Um, if you want to, uh, you could element, you could uh, iterate over every element by flattening it. So I could either call b.flatten, or it turns out there's actually a, a property. So, so these are equivalent to calling either the flatten function or just uh, access the flat property um, to iterate all, over all the elements. Uh, and you can iterate over the columns. Um, if you do a, you know, if you index, if you, if you make an index a loop to explicitly go over by column indexes, basically, right? So, um, okay, so, yes, yeah, so this is right. So, um, occasionally, we, we have to sometimes create new arrays, which are combinations of, of existing arrays. So, it's pretty common if I have, like, two separate um, uh, data cleaning pipelines. At the end, I might have two arrays that I have to stack back together uh, to, to end up with uh, the full data set again, right? So, um, so I'm still using my 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 um, array B. Um, um, oh, uh, so I already showed some examples of reshaping, right? So I guess I'm showing you. But but for for stacking, um, just a, a real quick example of that. So if I have two arrays here, so the the stacking they do have to match on the the dimensions that you're stacking on. So in this case, since they're both two by two arrays, I can stack them both ways, vertically or horizontally. But yeah, if I want to stack horizontally, both of them have to have the same number of rows, so the same number on axis zero. And if I want to stack vertically, vertically they would both have to have the same number of columns, right? 
So, and there's lots of other um, thing functions for stacking stuff together, but um, you know, I'll let you look those up. So. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then finally, uh, we will be making use of what are known as uh, fancy indexing or advanced indexing. Uh, and also Boolean indexing as well. So first, uh, uh, fancy indexing with array values. Um, so um, let's go back to using this array B here, which has these values in it, two-dimensional. Um, so instead of passing in uh, an index or a slice, I can pass in a list, or you can also pass in a, a tuple, uh, so any kind of sequence, or, or you can pass in a NumPy array as well. Uh, so you can use an array. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm doing here. So in this case, I create a NumPy array of, of the values 1, 3, and 4. Um, so this will just pull out the rows uh, uh, 1, 3, and 4. So this one and then the last two. Right? Uh, but yeah, like I said, it also works with lists um, or tuples. Anything that's sequence-like should work. So... And by the way, they don't have to be in order. So if I ask for two one zero, um, it'll pull them out, and it'll re it'll reverse those three, right? So, so um, am I wrong about tuples? That should work. Maybe I have to go back and look. I thought tuples would work, but okay. So, so maybe maybe I'm wrong about any sequence, uh, lists and, and numpy arrays. I have to go back and look that up. But but so yeah, when we did it here, so it, they don't have to be in any particular sequence, and they can even be repeated, right? So here I'll get two one, and I'll get uh, four repetitions of zero if you do that, right? So, um, and you know, so you can pass that fancy index or that index that array or list of um, of index values as the column or as any dimension. Um, and I think I'm going to skip over um, this because you can pass in like both rows and columns, uh, but uh, for one we don't use that very often. And in fact, if I needed to select some particular rows and then some, some particular columns from the rows, it's probably easier to understand and quicker to just just do it in two separate steps. So first get the rows that you need, uh, and then from that sample, get the particular columns. Um, so, so column zero and two. So that would be more likely what we would do instead of trying to do this more complex way to get some particular rows and then some particular columns from those rows. So, um, so I'll let you read this example. So another further example of, of using kind of the that index slicing or that fancy indexing to do stuff. So, um, and um, okay, and as our final thing, so here's one reason why being able to do Boolean or logical operations on NumPy arrays can be useful. So uh, we still got the same B that we've been using, this two-dimensional with these values in it. So remember, we can have Boolean expressions. So for example, if I want to find out all the values that are divisible by three, I can create a Boolean expression like this. Uh, because, you know, I do a mod of 3, and that's going to be 0 for all the things that were evenly divisible by 3, all the elements that were easily, evenly divisible. And then I do a logical expression, so I get true everywhere where it's true that it was divisible by 3, which actually happens to be just the 0th in the last column here, right? Now, you can use this. Uh, the, the most direct way to use a Boolean indexing is if I have that Boolean array, I can use that as an index, uh, into an array of the same size, and it will pull out only those elements where the particular location is true. So in this case, it'll pull out all the values that are divisible by three. Right? So this column, notice it actually pulls it out in row order. So, so you get 0, 9, and then 312, and 615, and so on. Right? And you might have expected this to be like a, a, a two-dimensional shape, so you end up with the same five column, f five rows, but two columns. But notice that's not true, okay? Because the the reason why you just end up with a one-dimensional list of the ones that 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 um, were pulled out 
by doing this Boolean um, indexing is because you know it, it's, it's not the case that you might have every value in a row or column. So the, the most general thing to do is just to pull out simply those values into a one-dimensional list of the ones that that matched your Boolean index. Okay. So. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, you can do that with any, so even a more complex Boolean expression to get all the values between 4 and 10. So in this case, we don't get one particular row or column. We just get the numbers that were between 4 and 10 inclusive uh, here in our array. So. Um, and you can use it for assignment as well. So, and we'll use, make use of this a lot, right? So if I need to do something with only the values that match some particular expression, like if I need for some reason all the, the values that are divisible by 3 to be zeroed out, um, I can do that. So this assigns a zero into all those values that were divisible by three. Okay. So uh, you know, so, so that's maybe the most the easiest way to comprehend. So to use a Boolean uh, array that's exactly of the same size to, to to pick out particular values, right? But another common way to do this, and we'll, we'll use this actually probably more often than the other, uh, is to to pull out particular for example, particular rows, okay? So we might do something like, um, so thinking ahead here for my machine learning class, we might want to have find all the samples whose particular column is some feature. Let, let's say find all the samples whose, uh, who are, are female. So, so maybe we have one column attribute that, that's that, that specifies whether the subject was female or male. So we could first create a, a Boolean array that's true for all of the, the, the rows, just for that particular column, for, for all the, the subjects that were female. Um, and then if you apply that like we do here, I, I could use that to pull out only those samples where the subject was female, right? So uh, that's in general kind of what we're demonstrating here. So um, although I'm, I'm just, I'm just specifying, so if I just give an array of uh, the same size as the number of rows, uh, or in this case, I'm doing the example to select particular columns, okay? So in this case, we've got uh, four columns, right? So if, if I make uh, a list in this case um, of size four, uh, and then I use kind of the indexing like we did before, but instead of passing it a slice, we pass in uh, this list of Booleans, it'll only get the, the column one and the column three and four. Um, so that should be just the column one and the column three and four, right? Or like I said before, since we have five rows, if I if I had um, selected the rows, um, so if I want just the first two rows, I could do that, right? So again, I could I can omit the 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 rest of the stuff if I want all columns, but just from the first two rows here, right? So that should give me that one and that one, all right? So that's Boolean indexing. Um, and like I said, the, the most, this last example is the most um, common way we'll be using it. So we'll create a Boolean result, usually just on a single column, uh, and then use that to figure out, to pull out only the samples where, where some condition was true by some attribute um, on those uh, things there, so. All right. So, um, so that's it for this video. I hope that that gives you some feel for how you use uh, NumPy and how you do vectorized operations and how the, the basic NumTi NumPy multidimensional array works, okay? So you should look through that, big, that, that notebook, uh, make certain that you kind of understand at least those basics, um, and uh, yeah, and then I'll see you in the next video.